Hello boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick for another edition of Karen Reads. Hope your Thanksgiving was good. My book this week is called Who Says Women Can't Be Doctors? The story of Elizabeth Blackwell is a true story. It's written by Tanya Lee Stone, who loves to write about women who are pushing the boundaries. She's written a bunch of books and gotten a bunch of awards and lives in Burlington, Vermont with her family. It's illustrated by Marjorie Priceman, who has twice received a Caldecott honor for illustration. And she did the illustrations in Zin, 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 The Violin, which we read a while back. And she's done a bunch of books too. Okay. It starts with a picture of Elizabeth Blackwell when she was young. I don't know if you can see that. So here we go. Who says women can't be doctors? I'll bet you've met plenty of doctors in your life, and I'll bet lots of them were women. Well, you might find this hard to believe, but there was once a time when girls weren't allowed to become doctors. Back in the 1830s, there were lots of things girls couldn't be. Girls were only supposed to become wives and mothers, or maybe teachers or seamstresses. Being a doctor was definitely not an option. What do you think changed all that? Or should I say, who changed all that? Elizabeth Blackwell, that's who, a tiny wisp of a girl who wanted to explore around every corner and who never walked away from a challenge. This was a girl who had once carried her brother over her head until he backed down from their fight. A girl who tried sleeping on the hard floor and with no covers just to toughen herself up. Yeah, she sounds determined like my daughter is. But she hadn't always wanted to be a doctor. Actually, blood made her queasy. One time her teacher used a bull's eyeball to show students how eyes work and Elizabeth was repulsed and she hadn't always wanted to help the sick she had no patience for being sick herself whenever she felt ill she simply went outside for a walk once when she was little she hid in a closet until she felt better she hated anyone fussing over her. And that's what their closets looked like in the old days, called them wardrobes. Like the kind in the Narnia tales. So why did she become the first woman doctor? Because one person believed she could and told Elizabeth she was just the kind of smart, determined girl 
who would change the world. That person was Mary Donaldson. When Elizabeth was 24, she went to visit her friend who was very ill. Mary told Elizabeth that she would have much preferred being examined by a woman. She urged Elizabeth to consider becoming a doctor. At first, Elizabeth could not believe her ears. Even if a, could, a girl could be a doctor, why would she want to be one? But Mary's idea gnawed at Elizabeth. Hmm, a female doctor. Elizabeth thought, it about, thought about it the second she woke up in the morning. She thought about it during sewing circles. She thought about it over tea. She even dreamed about it at night. And you could see her spilling her tea because she's thinking about it so hard. Finally, Elizabeth asked doctors and friends. Some thought it was a good idea, but didn't think there was any way it could be done. Others said it wasn't right. Women are much too weak for such hard work. Women aren't smart enough. Some people actually laughed at her. They thought she was joking. Elizabeth didn't see anything funny about a woman becoming a doctor. Elizabeth thought it was a fine idea and her family supported her. She worked as a teacher to earn money and applied to a handful of medical schools, but they all sent back the same answer, no. And you see these people laughing at her idea, ha ha ha. No, no women allowed. She tried other schools. More letters arrived at her door. One by one, the answer was always the same. No, 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 no. 28 no's in all. In different ways, the letters all said the same thing. Women cannot be doctors. They should not be doctors. But Elizabeth didn't believe in couldn't or shouldn't. She refused to give up. She was as stubborn as a mule, quite rightly. One day, an envelope arrived from a college. She opened it and everything changed. The answer was... Sorry, hang on a moment. Yes, Elizabeth packed her bags for Geneva Medical School in upstate New York. townspeople were expecting her. As she walked down the street, some of them pointed and stared. They whispered to themselves that she must be wicked or crazy. Elizabeth thought that at least the students wanted her there, except they didn't. The teachers had let the students vote on whether or not to allow Elizabeth to come. And the boys, 
figuring the school's school would never really accept a girl said yes. The planned, they planned to turn the whole thing into a big joke, but the joke was on them. Their raucous laughter turned to silence as the lady like Elizabeth took her seat. They wondered what kind of girl she was, the kind of girl who wouldn't take the bait. That is, when someone wants to start a fight, she just ignores it. Some thought a girl wouldn't be able to keep up, except Elizabeth did keep up, often studying past midnight. Elizabeth threw she was as smart as any boy, and soon the boys wanted to know what Elizabeth thought about this or about that. It took the townspeople longer to accept her. Some people were afraid of anything new or different. Not Elizabeth. You can see this mother here shining her, shading her child's eyes from seeing Elizabeth. On January 23rd, 1849, Elizabeth graduated with the highest grades in the whole class. She had become the first woman doctor in America. Although many people were proud, others were angry. One doctor even wrote, I hope for the honor of the humanity that she will be the last. Terrible thing to say. Sorry about the shaking today. But as you know, she certainly was not. Okay, she did become a doctor. And she went on to start a special hospital for women, both in the United States and in England. So she did a great job. All right, it was nice to hang out with you. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>